Hello photography fans and welcome to another episode about classic cameras and classic photo gear. In today's episode we're going to be talking about yet another beautiful classic camera. This camera is from late 20s. It takes 35 millimeter film. It's very beautiful and unique in its own right. So let me bring it over so you can marvel at this great little classic. Ladies and gentlemen, what I have in my hand is a beautiful Ansco Memo camera. It's a half frame camera that takes 35 millimeter film. It was introduced in about 1927, 1929, depending on the source that you're, that you're checking. It has some unique mechanical features. So without further ado, let's dig into this and see what this camera has to offer. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, this beautiful, classic beauty. Take a look at this. From every angle, this camera shouts, look at me, I'm classic. Now this beauty was manufactured by ANSCO, Anthony Scoville Camera Corporation, out of New York. It was introduced in between 1927 and 1929. It takes 35 millimeter film, which is movie film back in the days. And it was before 1935 or 1934 when Eastman Kodak actually introduced standard 35 millimeter canister. There were two versions of this camera. One was with 3.5 lens and one was with 6.3. I have this one with a 6.3 lens. Its shutter ranges from B to one hundredth of a second. There's a tea time, tea time. There's a 25th of a second and 50th. Right above the lens on top of the camera you have the counter which is automatic counter. The minute you take a picture, the counter advances. It goes all the way up to 50. It's, hand, it's manually resettable, so you just put your finger there on the knurled knob and turn it counterclockwise until you reach zero or desired number. The top of the camera features this beautiful, I believe this is brass, cylinder, which is actually your viewfinder. It gives you a pretty good idea of composition and framing for your picture. And also, on the top, you have this really handy, which you use to carry the camera around. Memo camera, and this is just my humble opinion, and I believe that some research would confirm that. It, as it would suggest, it's used to take pictures on your holidays, pictures of your family, pictures of your friends. It's really cool because you can take up to 50 pictures on a 35 millimeter roll. Further on top you have the lever or latch which allows you to open the back of the camera. Now I've just finished a roll of film with it so what I'm gonna do is open it up and I'll just reveal the inside of this camera which is just as interesting as the outside. So in order to open the camera you simply move the lever sideways and the back pops open. Now, as you can see, there's still some film. That's okay. I'm planning on actually advancing it back to the uh, back to the bottom cassette. Now, I wanted to show you the mechanism that's used to advance the camera. So, it is mounted to the back plate and you can see there's a, this little pin which is actually which actually controls a slider spring-loaded slider and if you turn this over you'll notice that the slider is spring-loaded those two springs one on each side of the camera of, of the back rather and the pressure plate itself features these two claws, so to, so to speak, or, or teeth. 
and they actually grab the perforations in the 35 millimeter film and then when you push the lever or pin down they they push the film into the bottom cassette which is really cool but when you release it they're curved in such a way that it does not pull the film back from the bottom cassette back to the top one it actually just glides over it now these cassettes are proprietary cassettes for ANSCO, ANSCO camera before 1934 before the standardization of 35 millimeter cassettes everybody and their mother-in-law were making cassettes for their own cameras and there was no different with ANSCO, ANSCO. I'll pull these out in a second but before I do that I'm just gonna push the film back to the to the bottom cassette alright let's see if that worked it sure did the film is gone magic so in my case the top cassette simply comes out quite easily the bottom cassette needs a little motivation but it too comes out now a little bit about these cassettes put this on the side when I first got the camera the cassettes were in rather distrust condition Oh, well, there still are but mainly the light trap the light seal on top was basically non-existent I went to local fabric store and I purchased a strip of velvet black velvet and I used the contact adhesive to glue the strip of velvet on the lips inside the cassettes I was actually going to use the velvet or seals from the original 35 millimeter not the original but from the standard 35 millimeter cassettes but the problem was that I couldn't get it off the cassette so I just purchased my own as you can see there are these springs here there's two of them so basically you take the film and in my case I use this um, Ektar actually to shoot the pictures I use the black and white but I use this Ektar to show you how easily it is to load the film so basically what you do you put everything in a dark bag or you can do it in complete darkness you take the cassette which is going to sit on top you take the film and what I like to do is trim the little corners so they do not interfere or catch or anything and you just simply load this thing and it's simple as that film just coils inside of it. Now when I'm done, I cut it trim the edges or the corners and I use the other cassette and I slide it in just so it catches and then I put the whole assembly into the camera. Very simple. As you can see on the inside you have a little spring On top which actually, which actually holds the top cassette and the bottom cassette fits rather snugly now I'm not sure if this is a problem with my cassette or is it because it's designed like that that I'm not sure however mine does that, does that. now the hole inside is removable you have the screw on the side you simply remove the screw the hole Thing comes out and I'm not sure why it would for cleaning perhaps I don't know what I did I cleaned the lens a little bit because it was kind of hazy I used the cotton swabs to do that now on the side of the camera you have the shutter release the shutter is self cocking so there's no need to do two operation which is cock and then shoot you just simply 
shoot and it releases and it goes back to its original position. Now they do have this nifty little lock which holds the lever in place and prevents accidental activation which is really neat feature for 1920s camera. On this side you don't have anything, it's just plain. On the front you have the name ANSCO, that's earlier models, the later models were labeled MEMO. In the back of the camera you have the nameplate with some patent MEMO camera and made in USA by ACFA ANSCO. So chances are this was later model after ACFA German company bought bottom out or was uh, combined with ANSCO. This is a really neat feature, the little holder to simply grab and just carry your camera like that. Now I shot a RAW film on this so this is a Arista EVU 100 ISO. I'm planning on developing it and hopefully sharing pictures at the end of the video. Now this is a half frame camera mind you so on a 24 frame film you can take 50 pictures almost 50 pictures 48 to be exact I loaded enough to probably be equivalent of 30 frames but I probably only shot like 40 yeah right roughly about 40 now at the film advance and the shutter are not coupled so when you take a picture the only thing that actually is coupled with the shutter is the film counter or frame counter and that's it and after each picture you just simply take a photo and advance the film very simple to use and I'm hoping for some interesting shots that were around the house people kids whoever I, I found I took pictures of Focusing on this camera is pretty much non-existent. This 6.3 lens is pre-focused at 15 feet. Now my idea is that when I'm shooting at f11, I'm extending the depth of field enough to cover all my shots. Whether that's the case or not, the proof is in the pudding, which is about to be cooked. So. I'm pulling this out, film, hopefully it's not overexposed, hopefully my black velvet strip worked fine and I have some usable shots on this. Now if you notice on the cassette there's an ACFA logo on both sides and it does show made in the USA. That's back when Made in USA actually meant something. And also on the bottom of the cassette, which is fairly almost invisible in my case, this one's better. It says load and unload its subdued light. Now that's from the 1920s, so we're talking the film speeds were 20, ISO 25. I loaded ISO 100, I loaded that in a dark bag. So hopefully this works out fine. Now, that's it about this camera. It's a beautiful little addition to any camera collection. You can get these for about 40, 50 bucks if you find them. The only issue with mine is that the shutter is kind of stuck at 100 of a second. So I shoot at that. I don't know if it's hand holdable really at ISO, I mean sorry, at the 125th. I would have to test that out, but if you hold it, I guess you can, without shaking it, you can shoot lower speeds. My speeds are all consistent, 1 100th of a second. Um, there's probably something off with the shutter, but I'm not going to mess with that. I'm not planning on using this thing on a daily basis. The bottom of the camera has a quarter 20 tripod socket, which is really neat. 
no tripod socket on the back or on the side. So basically you're shooting vertical. But given the frame size roughly about 18 by 24 millimeters, it's roughly a square. So it doesn't matter. So photography fans, I hope you enjoyed this short overview and introduction to this beautiful Ansco half frame memo camera. Now, there were a few other models made. There were ones with 3.5 f3.5 lens and there was a Boy Scout model which was olive drab color. This one is just simply black leatherette. If you like this video, subscribe. I'm almost at 1000 subscribers which would be really cool to reach. There will be more videos coming, we'll be doing some work in the darkroom and we'll definitely be trying to keep the film alive. After I actually had a chance to review the pictures from this camera, it turns out the pictures basically suck. And it's not necessarily the fault of the camera, it's probably it's an experience of the photographer using it. I was shooting at f16, which should basically extend the depth of field from infinity to about 8 feet, but it, necess it wasn't necessarily the case in most of these pictures. Pictures are super grainy, and a lot of them are out of focus. I'll still revisit this camera with different film and fresh film. What happened is, my initial thought was the roll is brand new, so I loaded it. Well, roll wasn't brand new. I got it out of Exacta, and half of it was already exposed, or most of it was exposed. So when I loaded it into the new cassette, actually uh, only 16 pictures were available. Of, uh, room for 16 frames was available, and which that's what I have. And like I said, they suck. So we we'll revisit the subject. I'll definitely revisit the camera and load it with some fresh film once I get some 100 film.